Father, thank you so much for the truth of that song that you sang. Father, you willingly took on all the sin of the world. And gave up your life willingly. So that one day, if we choose to follow you and place our trust in you, there will be a time where there will be no pain, no guilt. It will just be a glorious day sitting around the throne of the town worship. But it will just go on for all of you. Father, thank you that we can put our total faith and trust in you. You were our Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for all that you've done and all that you've going to do. And Father, as we uh, open your word, as Brother David comes, I just pray that you would uh, use him to speak truth to us, to encourage us, uh, so that we can live boldly and freely, Father. May us all these things you're living have uh, spoken the last few weeks about which kingdom, kingdom of darkness, kingdom of light, uh, are we living in, what is the, the plan or the work of God in our circumstances and reveal to us that we are a part of this kingdom of light. And I was thinking about this in relationship to Thanksgiving, and I just wanted to uh, Say one of the things I'm thankful for uh, is that God made a way for all of humanity. Though we have rebelled against God, even as Satan and all of the fallen angels, we know that hell was made as a place for them. That's who it was made for. Uh, he made a way for me to avoid that place because I joined that rebellion. In fact, the scripture says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all joined that rebellion. So I'm thankful today that Jesus was willing to make the sacrifice he made to prevent the people that I love and all the folks around ever having to go to hell if they would simply choose Jesus. Now that's the key to it. So when we think about what we're thankful for, you know, I read this passage just a moment ago. Uh, for while we were, or that's right, I was going to, and I saved it, I did. For while we were still helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. That's all of us. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man someone would care even to die. But God. That's, that is the transitional, the pivotal phrase in this passage. But God. Demonstrates his own love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having been justified by his blood. Made just, made right in the eyes of God by His blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through Him. Folks, it's all about Jesus. Every good thing that we can have or be in our lifetime is going to come because of Him. Now, this passage goes on to warn uh, in the idea of uh, the flow of this. I want you to understand the flow of this is going to be more topical. So you'll see a lot of moving through verses from various places. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God. You hear the theme? It's because redemption runs all through Scripture. We were reconciled to God through the death of His Son. Much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And not only this, we also exult in God. So we express our thanksgiving... In the first passage, because of what God has done, now we are exulting in Him. And this is worship. This is what you were doing a moment ago. And as, uh, as you live your life each day in, in His power, that is worship as well. So this, we exult in God through the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. We've been 
reconciled to God. Uh, whatever Carl had done this week, it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> it's all been reconciled, right? And so we understand reconciliation, and yet I could do nothing to reconcile myself to God, but Jesus has done that. Notice in Mark 8. You have a story here in verse 34 when Jesus sends the crowd and his disciples and says to them, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. This is what we're saying when we say that this is a, a change of life. When I say yes to Jesus, this is not just I'm just going to nail a little Jesus on to the happy things I do. Now, this is a, a complete change. I'm turning my life over to Him. Do you see that? He is saying this. If you wish to come after me, deny yourself, take up my cross, He says, and follow me. To do what He does, to live how He lives, to have His priorities. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? It goes on in verse 37 to say, what would you exchange for your soul? What, what is worth your eternal soul? Because we talk about heaven, we talk about the kingdom of light, but there's the kingdom of darkness and, and hell and the lake of fire. And so what would be worth living in this life for, uh, if you live to be 110, that would be worth exchanging your soul and your eternity with God? There's nothing. We don't understand that so often, but there's nothing worth that mistake. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, Jesus says, in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. There's a, a, a whole view of things that's going on that we don't often think about. And God is at work uh, to see how we are responding. Not that he has to wait to know, but he patiently allows us to operate in the free will that we have. And to respond to him. Notice in Luke 12. Jesus goes on to say. I say to you my friends. Do not be afraid of those who kill the bodies. And after that have no, no more they can do to you. You see a lot of times in this lifetime. The reason that we're focused on the wrong things. Is because we succumb to the pressures. Of the people and the circumstances around us. Rather than focusing on God. But I will warn you, Jesus says, whom to fear. Fear the one who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. But this is a, a, an honest kind of fear that says God is worthy of our respect and he is the final authority and justice.